that three won't go. We got numbers. Marquez ahead to Bailey. The spin and the finish. Ooh. Great catch and finish right there by Bailey. Quick spin move. UCLA is surviving a spirited second half by Northwestern last night to punch their ticket to the Western Region's Sweet 16. That begins later this week in Las Vegas. It has also been 28 years since the Bruins won their last national championship under coach Jim Herrick. That 1995 run produced Tyus Edney's famous last second shot against Missouri to keep the Bruins title hopes alive. Tyus joins us tonight to talk about that. But first, just in case you've forgotten, here's a memorable trip back to those incredible final 4.8 seconds. One last try for the Bruins of UCLA to get into the Sweet 16. Knocked out last year in the first round by Tulsa. They don't want to lose this one. Edney going the distance. Yes! yes. Well, Tyus, first of all, happy anniversary. 28 years ago today, you made one of the most remembered shots in UCLA basketball history. I want to know, how do you remember that shot against Missouri? I remember being stressed <laughs> <laughs> when we were down one. Uh, yeah, that was the high stress time, but um, you know, it, it, it ended well, so it's, it's definitely a great memory. Um, but it went from really stressful to uh, really exciting. <laughs> now, of course, Missouri scored with, what, 4.8 seconds to go in that ball game. We're talking second round of the NCAA tournament here, and you guys call a timeout. Can you tell us what, what happened during that timeout? Because I've, I've heard that Ed O'Bannon was saying, just give me the ball and get out of the way. But, but what happened in that timeout? Tell us. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, at first, it was a long walk back to the huddle. <laughs> um, it was, I think we were all in shock a little bit about being down one. You know, and, and then how much time we had, and and um, the thing is, we got when we got into the huddle. Coach Herrick was, he was calm, like I don't know, like he already knew what was going to happen because I know we were panicking, but he just, as usual, was just always calm, like it was no big deal. And um, you know, he just drew up the play to, to give me the ball, and um, like you said, Ed was gesturing to me in the background, looking at me like, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Like, <laughs> um, and so that usually was the play and the plan. Um, but Coach Hare grabbed me and was like, I, you understand what I want you to do is I want you to shoot the ball. So um, I just went out and it was like, I got to get this ball down the floor and make a decision. And, um, you know, Ed wasn't open at this time. So uh, it, it turned into an opportunity for me. Now, let's remind everybody, you're taking the ball inbounds from under the basket on the other end of the floor. 4.8 seconds to go in this game. How confident yes. were you that you could get the ball and go the length of the court and score in that amount of time? Um, I, I knew we had time. You know, we would, uh, we would do a drill in practice sometimes where coach would have us dribble the length of the court in three seconds. So... You know, mentally, I mean, you don't even realize when it's going to be relevant, but it, it was at this point, and, and uh, I knew that we had time. But I also knew that if I got stopped or slowed down, it was going to be an issue. So, um, you know, I just, I just focused on uh, just getting it down the court as fast as I can, and um, that's what it was. And, and uh, they, they were kind of angling me off, and then I went behind the back at, at, in the, like, around half court, and I uh, realized I kind of lost him in the lane. The lane opened up for me to get to the rim. Let's talk about what happens after you make a shot like that. Take us inside your mind and your heart. I mean, this is a shot I'm sure you've been asked about a million times in your lifetime ever Ooh. since. It's a memory you'll have for a lifetime. Yes. Just take us to that moment. The, the, the shot goes in, you win the game. Tell us about that feeling. Oh man, that's I think that's the, the feeling all players dream about is um, just making a, a game winning basket to to help your team win. And um, I remember for a split second after I released it, I was, you know, you're still you're never sure until you're sure. And I just feel like the ball just hung in the net forever once I saw it in the net. And then it was just like mayhem, you know. I don't know if you've seen. I'm sure you've seen the celebration, but we all, we all knew we dodged a huge bullet on that one. And uh, you know, that was that's just a feeling 
that you just never forget. And you never realize how big it's going to be even at the time when, you know, I was the second round and we still had a lot of work to do. But, um, you know, I guess in, in hindsight, you realize how important and how big that was. You know, I feel as though the, the March Madness is the greatest thing there is in, in all of sports, the greatest tournament, because I love the fact that every single school has an opportunity. Every school at the beginning of the season has a chance. You win your conference tournament, you get into the big dance, you've got a chance. Maybe not a great chance, but you've got a chance. Having been a part of that, a part of the fabric, the history of this great tournament, just tell us your feelings about this, the tournament, and March Madness in general. Uh, I, I think it's like the greatest time of the year. You know, I know that there's a lot of different sporting events, you know, Super Bowl, things like that, but just nothing is like March Madness to me. I mean, I think it's it's a time where everyone's glued to the TV. Games are on all day, um, and Cinderella stories are happening every day. You know, it's, it's kind of the stories you watch in movies growing up, and, and, and you get to watch them real time, and every year it's a new, just a new team and a new opportunity for someone to, to prove – uh, that they belong there and, and how, how good and how well they can do in the tournament. And um, it's just nothing like it. it I, the regular season's one thing when you're playing and, you know, just going on road trips and playing in tough environments. But um, once the, the tournament starts and you arrive to those locations and you just see the, the banners and, the, and the, you know, the, the finals and the final four signs everywhere and, and uh, it's just like the towns, wherever you're playing, and the town is buzzing, and it's just it's just a whole different different feeling, and and you really feel like you're part of something special, and, and it makes you feel, you know, like you've accomplished something to to get there. Well, that that was a great answer to that question. You will always be a part of March Madness history, and thank you for providing us with one of the great moments in March Madness history. Tyus, appreciate your time today. Thanks for being with us. Oh, no, this is great. I appreciate it. All right, Tyus Edney, UCLA Bruin. We're back with more Sports Wrap right after this.